The best way to revise SI base unit is to do lots of them. So grab a pen and paper and work through all the SI base units in A-level physics with me. Starting up with force, remember force is equal to mass times acceleration. This means that the base unit will be kilograms for the mass times the acceleration, which is meters per second squared. Energy, we can use any of our favorite formulas for energy. My personal favorite is a half mv squared. So a half mv squared, the half has no units. So this here will be kilograms. V squared is ms to a power of minus one squared, which is gonna give me kilograms meter squared s to a power of minus two. This is a really important one because it's also the base unit for work done and also any type of energy be it gravitational electric basically if it's measured in joules it can also be written as kilograms meter squared s to the power of minus two moving on to momentum so p is equal to mass times velocity so the base unit of that will be kilograms ms to the power of minus one Density, uh, this here is an easy one. So that's mass per unit volume. So this here will be kilograms, meters, cube because it's divided by volume. Okay, now pressure and stress are gonna have the same SI base unit because they're both force per unit area. So pressure is force divided by area. The base unit for force was kilograms ms to a power of minus two divided by the base unit for the area which is meter squared. So this leaves me with kilograms uh, m to the power of minus one s to the power of minus two strain is an interesting one because it's actually just equal to the um, extension divided by the original length this thing here is in meters divided by meters so strain has no units Young's modulus, because Young's modulus is just stress over strain and uh, strain has no units, Young's modulus is going to have SI base units of stress, which are just kilograms, m to a power of minus one, s to a power of minus two. Okay, moving on, charge. Well, Q is equal to I times T. The amp is a base unit. So this will be amps seconds. Okay, voltage, so V is equal to the amount of energy per unit charge. Let's actually make a little bit more space for the voltage because that's kind of an important one. We'll come back to the uh, resistance in a little bit. Well, voltage is just energy per unit charge. So the base unit of energy was kilograms meters squared s to the power of minus two. We're gonna divide that by the base unit for the charge, which is amps seconds so what is left here will be kilograms meters squared uh, a to the power of minus one and then s to the power of minus two divided by s will give me s to the power of minus three now resistance because resistance is v over i where v is the voltage i is the current this will have the base units of voltage which is kilograms meters squared a to the power of minus one, s to the power of minus three, divided by uh, the units for the current, which is just amps. So basically this whole thing will just turn to a to the power of minus two for resistance. Resistivity, well, remember resistivity is given by R times A divided by the length. So this is really just ohm times meter squared divided by meter. So this is just given by ohm meters. Therefore, the base unit of resistivity will be the same as the base unit for, uh, for the ohm. However, multiply by meters. So what is left, let's see if I can fit that in here, will be kilograms meters rather than square this will now be cubed a to the power of minus 2 s to the power of minus 3 power 
What is the unit of power? Sorry guys, I just couldn't resist. The watt is a joule per second. So a joule per second is gonna be kilograms meter squared. S to the power of minus two divided by seconds, it will be S to the power of minus three. Okay, and let's make a little bit more space and we'll come back to the refractive index N in a second. The intensity is just the power divided by the cross-sectional area. The power is kilograms meters squared S to a power of minus three. Uh, a here stands for area, which is just meters squared. Those guys are gonna get canceled. What I'm left with is kg S to a power of minus three. Three. Refractive index, well, this guy here is just speed over speed, uh, where this is C. <laughs> Let's write this a little bit better. Take two, refractive index is just C over V, where C is the speed of light, uh, divided by the speed of light uh, in that particular substance. Uh, well, that's speed over speed, so it has no units, perfect. Okay, moving on to angular speed and frequency. Well, that's, that's just two pi over T, two pi. Um, the measure of the radian is really just unitless, it's just a number, it's length divided by length. So this thing has no units divided by time. So the base unit of both of these is per second or S to the power of minus one. Luminosity is defined as the total radiated outward power by a star. It's basically what astronomers tend to call um, power. So it's gonna have the same units for power, which is kilograms meter squared S to a power of minus three. Hubble's constant H naught, so remember V is equal to H naught D, so this here is in meters per second, so distance is in just meters, therefore H naught will be in S to a power of minus one as a standard base unit, typically is given in kilometers, um, uh, per second per megaparsec so and then we'll have to convert that to SI units okay moving on to capacitance so capacitance is um, defined as the amount of charge divided by unit voltage Let's see what this thing here will give me. Q divided by V. Well, Q is in amps seconds. The voltage is in kilograms meters squared. A to the power of minus one. S to the power of minus three. Okay, so A divided by one over A, that's just A squared. S divided by S to a power of minus three is the same as S multiplied by S cubed, which is S to a power of four. Then what we have left is kilograms to a power of minus one, uh, meters to a power of minus two, and then it seems as we are done. Time constant, so the time constant in a capacitor is just defined as C times R. Uh, we can actually simplify this a little bit better. So C, the capacitance is just Q over V multiplied by R. Uh, we can simplify this even more. So this is Q divided. Now the charge Q, let's just write it as a multiplied by or the current so this will be i multiplied by t the voltage i'm going to write as i r multiplied by r uh, that's going to cancel that's going to cancel so what we're left with is just time so the time constant surprise surprise has the base units of the second Next one, the gravitational constant. Well, F is minus gm m over r squared. Uh, let's just rearrange for g. So let's see if we have enough space. g uh, will be given by F multiplied by r squared. And then uh, we're gonna be dividing that by mm. Okay, well, the unit of that will be equal to the unit of the force, which 
is kilograms meters s to the power of minus two. Then we're going to multiply this by r squared, which is measured in meters squared. Then we're going to be dividing that by kilograms squared because this here is mass times mass. Uh, okay, now let's see what are we left with for uh, uh, for. Okay, so let's see what are we left with. So kilograms. Uh, divided by kilograms is just going to give me kg to a power of minus one. Then I have a meter times meter squared, which is going to give me m to the power of three, s to the power of minus two. Okay, I have a few left and I've actually run, run out of whiteboard space, so I'm going to have to get rid of a few of those. Okay, so what do we have left? Planck's constant uh, for this guy here, I'm going to use E is equal to HF. H is E divided by the frequency. Energy is just kilograms, meters squared, S to the power of minus two divided by the frequency, which is just in uh, one over seconds. Okay, so this thing here will be given by kilograms meters squared and then s to the power of minus two divided by one over s it's going to give me s to the power of minus one okay next one b magnetic flux density okay so for this one probably the easiest equation will be f is equal to qvb so i'm just going to rearrange this for b uh, which is going to give me b is equal to the force divided by q times v. Okay, the force is given by kilograms uh, meters per second squared divided by the base unit of charge. Uh, what is that? Amps seconds multiplied by the speed uh, which is given in meters per second. So kilograms all sorted. Uh, there's only one amp, so I'm going to write it as a to the power of minus one. Um, the meters and meters here can go. Now s and s to the power of minus one are also going to cancel. So it appears that we are left with by with kilograms a to the power of minus one s to the power of minus two. Hi guys, this is me editing, so let's just add a couple of more. So let's add the base unit for the specific heat capacity C. So C will be given by the energy divided by mass times the change in temperature in degrees Celsius or Kelvin. Uh, okay, well, the energy is just given by kilograms meters squared S to the power of minus two. Now the mass on the other hand, and is given in kilograms and the change in temperature in base units will be given in Kelvin. So this means that the base unit for specific heat capacity, so the kilograms are going to um, cancel out, will be given by m squared s to the power of minus 2, k to the power of minus 1. Uh, shall we just do specific latent heat as well? So the equation is that the energy is equal to the mass times the specific latent heat, be it of uh, vaporization or fusion, they're going to have the same unit. Uh, because of that, that, the specific latent heat is given by energy per unit mass, which is going to be kilograms meter squared s to the power of minus two divided by the mass, which is just in kilograms. So those guys are going to cancel and what we're left with is just meter squared s to the power of minus two. And also, now that we have uh, flux density B, let's also quickly do the uh, magnetic flux, which is defined as BA cos theta. This will have the same base unit as flux linkage, which is MBA cos theta, where N is the number of turns. Okay, well, this guy here will be kilograms um, A to the power of minus one and uh, S to the power of minus two. So this here are 
the base units for B. Now the base unit for area is going to be meters squared. Cos theta has no units. So this here will be kg, a to the power of minus one, s to the power of minus two meters squared. Okay, last one from my list, acoustic impedance. Okay, the formula for it is rho times C, where rho is just the density and C is just, uh, well, just speed. So what is that going to be? Kilograms, meters, um, kilograms per meter cubed, excuse me, multiplied by m s to the power of minus 1. So this here will be kilograms m to the those two are going to cancel leaving a square m to the power of minus two s to the power of minus one have i missed any important si base units let me know in the comments below and also if you're revising for a level physics have a look at this video right here next in which i go over a common mistake that will help you get the maximum score possible in the exam good luck and have a look over here